Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to do a very important topic in anatomy and physiology, and that is acidosis and alkalosis problems, or acid-base problems. And so, if we look at this figure over here, we'll see problems very similar to this, okay? where they give you a pH, they give you a PCO2 value, and then they give you a bicarbonate value. And on the surface, and this is what I thought when I first took the class, these are pretty imposing problems, right? Actually, they're pretty easy. And there's a strategy that we can use for every single one of these problems, and it works every time. It's a pretty simple thing. Okay. Now, we're going to do three examples in this video, but before we do that, we actually need to look at the normal values for pH, PCO2, and bicarbonate. Okay. So first of all, the normal pH range is between 7.35 and 7.45, and that's of course the pH of the blood. Sometimes when you look this up, you'll see this unit P. Technically pH has no units, but sometimes they'll put that, but that doesn't really mean anything. 7.35 to 7.45. Now carbon dioxide or CO2 is a gas, so it's measured in pressure units, but the PCO2 or the partial pressure of CO2 is between 35 and 45 millimeters of mercury. And then the concentration of bicarbonate ion, HCO3 minus, is between 24 and 28, and this is actually milliequivalents per liter. Now the actual identity of some of these units is really not as important, but the actual ranges you do have to memorize, because these problems, as you can see, are gonna give you values. And if the value is within this range, then it's a normal value. However, if it lies either below the lower limit or above the upper limit, then it's considered an abnormal value. Now before we go any further into these examples and how to do them, I want to show you a trick to particularly learning the PCO2 range. Okay. Now the pH range, this is something you absolutely need to have memorized. I don't care what discipline you're going into if you're taking this class, you need to have the blood pH range memorized. 7.35 to 7.45. You should go over that in repetition orally over and over again. Just say it out loud over and over again until you've got it memorized because you're going to use that all throughout your career. What's nice, though, is that the PCO2 range, if we take the two numbers after the decimal point in each of these, so the 35 and 7.35 and the 45 and 7.45, and just drop those down, that's actually the range of PCO2 value. And that just happens completely by coincidence, so that's kind of nice. And as far as I know with bicarbonate, HCO3-, there is no trick to learning the 24 to 28. But if there is, and somebody knows that, please leave a comment. That'd be really helpful for me and then anybody else who's watching the video as well. So memorize these three ranges. And once you've got those, then we can go into answering these questions. And we're going to use a strategy of three steps every single time, and it's the same order every single time. Okay? The first thing we need to do is determine if the blood is acidic or alkaline. And alkaline is another term for basic. Okay? Remember, acidic is a lower pH, and alkaline is a greater pH, or higher pH. So basically, what we're going to do is just look at the pH that we're given and figure out if it's below the lower limit here or above the upper limit. If it's below 7.35, it would be acidic. If it's above 7.45, it would be alkaline. And that's the first thing we're going to determine. And we just write that down, acidic or alkaline. Okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to find the value that would produce this effect. Okay? So we first figure out if it's acidic or alkaline, and then see which of the other two things, PCO2 or bicarbonate, would cause that effect. And this will make more sense when we actually do an example. Okay? And so then the third step, the last step, is we just look at the other value that was not yet used. Okay? So let's suppose, for example, if we determine that the PCO2 value is what caused, let's say, acidity, then for the third step, we just look at the other value that we haven't used, which in that case would be bicarbonate, and we just see if that value is within the normal range or if it's outside the normal range. Okay? So just to get a grasp on that, let's actually work an example. Okay? So we're going to work example number one here. Let me actually blow this up a little bit so you can see it. So We've got a pH of 7.31, a PCO2 of 55, and a bicarbonate level of 28. So step one, 
is determine if the blood is acidic or alkaline. Well, the pH is 7.31. So 7.31 is clearly below the lower limit here. So it's a low pH. That means it is acidic. Okay. So we're just going to write down acidic. All right. So for step two, we want to find the value that would produce this effect. In other words, is our CO2 level contributing to this acidity, or is the bicarbonate level contributing to the acidity? Now, one thing uh, that we need to understand is that any time we have high CO2 levels, that's going to translate to a low pH. And that's because you need to associate high CO2 levels with high levels of hydrogen ions always associate those two things together. So when CO2 levels are high, we have a low pH. Now, not for this problem, but it's conversely true. If we had a low CO2 level, that would be a high pH. So CO2 levels and pH are inversely related. So always remember that. So now back to the original second question. We want to find the value that would produce this. So what's causing the acidity? Is it the CO2 levels or the bicarbonate? Well, our CO2 level is 55 and our bicarbonate's 28. I always look at the first one first and the bicarbonate second. So let's look at the CO2 first. Well, the PCO2 is 55. And that level is clearly above the upper limit for PCO2. And remember what I said, high levels of CO2 drop the pH and cause it to become acidic. So that answers that question. It's the CO2 that's causing the acidity. Now, here's a very important thing. The PCO2 is respiratory. The bicarbonate is always metabolic. Okay? So if the CO2 is causing the acid-base imbalance, it's a respiratory problem. If the bicarbonate was actually causing the acid-base imbalance, it'd be a metabolic problem. Okay? So because our CO2 is what's contributing to the acidity, it's acidosis, but it is respiratory acidosis. Okay? So that's how you figure that part out. Now the last part is, we want to look at the other value not yet used. Well, we just used the CO2, so our only other option is bicarbonate. Right? So let's look at the bicarbonate value. It's 28, and our normal range is 24 to 28. So actually, the bicarbonate is within the normal range. Okay, So that means there's no compensation. So therefore, we've answered the two parts of this question. We have respiratory acidosis but there's no compensation. And so we can say our final answer is respiratory acidosis with no compensation, or we could say uncompensated respiratory acidosis. Um, some instructors might want you to be even more specific, because remember bicarbonate is metabolic. So you could say respiratory acidosis with no metabolic compensation. All right, let's work a second problem. All right, we're gonna work this one down here at the bottom. So we have a pH of 7.48, a PCO2 of 55, and a bicarbonate level of 33. All right, so first thing, pH is 7.48. So we're going to look at that and determine if it's acidic or alkaline. Well, our pH range normally is 7.35 to 7.45. 7.48 is above the upper limit, so this is alkalosis. Okay. So we just write that down. It's alkaline or alkalosis. Okay. Second step, we need to find the value that would produce this. And we have two options, the PCO2 or the bicarbonate. This time we have alkalosis. But again, we're going to look down at these values and see what would cause that. All right, so PCO2 level is 55. That's above the upper limit for PCO2 levels. And if you remember from one of the previous slides, High levels of CO2 actually cause a low pH or acidity, but we have an alkalosis problem, not an acidosis problem. So clearly the PCO2 that we have is not causing the alkalosis. The only way the PCO2 here could be causing the alkalosis is if the PCO2 was low like below 35. Here it's above 45, so clearly the PCO2 is not causing the alkalosis. Okay. So we're going to then look at the other value just to be sure. Our bicarbonate level is 33. Okay? So again, look at the normal range of bicarbonate, 24 to 28. 33 is above the upper limit for bicarbonate. Now here's the thing with bicarbonate. 
Bicarbonate is metabolic, but bicarbonate is a base. So elevated bicarbonate causes alkalosis, okay? Remember, elevated CO2 causes acidosis. Elevated bicarbonate causes alkalosis. So because we have a, a bicarbonate level of 33, and that's above the upper limit here, it is the bicarbonate level that is contributing to the alkalosis. And remember, bicarbonate is metabolic. So therefore, we can say now we have metabolic alkalosis. Okay? And that's because it's the bicarbonate that's causing the acid-base problem. Okay. Now, for our last step here, we need to look at the other value not yet used. Well, we clearly just used the bicarbonate. So the only other one is the PCO2. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the PCO2 and decide whether it's in the normal range, in which case there's no compensation, or if it's out of the normal range, in which case there would be compensation. So my PCO2 level was uh, 55, and 55 is above the upper limit for PCO2. It's out of that range. So that means because it's out of its normal range, there is compensation through the PCO2. And remember, the PCO2 is respiratory, okay? So therefore, we do have respiratory compensation, okay? So our final answer is metabolic alkalosis, that was the first part, with compensation. And we could say metabolic alkalosis with respiratory compensation. Or we can say compensated metabolic alkalosis, okay? And this process that you do of these three questions right here, you do this the same way for every single type of problem that you have, okay? But remember, you do have to have these values memorized in order to work the problems on a quiz or an exam, okay? So hopefully this video made sense and you learned a little bit about how to work acid-base problems in anatomy. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.